headphones on. Okay. I haven't even picked a song yet. Oh, what do we have to pick from? Are the, are the charts still boring? a yes. God, whatever. Just just give me the worst song out right now. Just very worst. Absolute worst thing in the top 10. Let's just make this easy. You again? You've got to be... Uh, whatever. Just let's get this done. I'm doing this for four goddamn years without a vacation. Pitbull still around. He's still stupid. Okay, let me see if I can recap my feelings about Armando Perez, aka Pitbull, aka Mr. 305, aka Mr. Worldwide, aka this freaking guy Jesus. I feel like I've already done dozens of episodes on him, for Christ's sake. Anyway, around about 2010 or so, I was complaining a lot about how the charts were dominated by a genre I like to call club shit. I, I, I came up with that myself. And I remember begging for something smarter and deeper to come along that would sweep all the shallow club shit away. And to my gratification, we actually did start getting music that had, or at least tried to have, depth, maturity, creativity, and so on. And they started swarming the radio stations, and the charts are a much different place now. But as for it sweeping all this stupid shallow stuff away, well, that did not happen, obviously. Sure, B-listers like LMFAO went away, but the bigger names like Will I Am, Kesha, Flo Rida, they just dug in their heels and refused to move. They laughed at the attempts to make them move. They taunt us from their mighty fortress. I fart in your general direction! That they do. Now, most of these acts opted not to change their MO in any substantial way, unless you count Will I Am's decision to somehow get worse. But the Pitbull story is a tiny bit different. Pitbull's greatest talent has always been locating the next hot trend and that thing. When he first started in 04, the big things were crunk and reggaeton, and he hitched his wagon to those and was one of the first people to get big on those trends. Of course, both those genres were practically dead and gone two years later, so Pitbull should have been back out on the street, but at that point he correctly predicted the dance music boom of 2009 and 2010 and reinvented himself from dirty barrio kid from the mean streets of Miami to flashy, well-dressed club VIP and he became one of the biggest names in music in the process. So while Pitbull remains one of the most limited and talentless personalities in all of music though, he is actually a good barometer of what music is and where it's going. Where is music going now? There was a time. Well, from what I can tell, one of the bigger trends in pop music is a shift towards this serious sounding, sweeping electronic dance music in the David Guetta slash Calvin Harris slash Swedish House Mafia mold. Stuff that's intended to be both good to dance to and yet also sweeping and intense and emotionally affecting. Now techno and dance music can be all these things just fine, but each and every chart hit that tried it recently I've absolutely hated. None of the dance hits from this year or the last have been anywhere near successful in pulling it off. And they're pulling all these good singers like Rihanna or Sia or Florence from Florence and the Sheen of all freaking people, just whoever has those big emotive vocals that try and add some depth to their grooves, but no, no matter how good the singer is, the song never works. It's too underwritten and impersonal to be meaningful, and it's too heavy to be any fun. I would honestly rather go back to the club shit. Just wanna feel this moment. That kind of dance for the dull beat is what I think Pitbull is going for here, which makes it a triple fail. Not only is it not fun and not worth taking seriously, it's also not even cohesive because Pitbull's being Pitbull all over it. I'm far from cheap. I break down companies with all my peeps. Maybe we could travel the world and I can give you and all you can see. Yep, that totally works. You doing that thing you've done a billion times. You know, hey, fun experiment I just thought of right now for this episode. It's, it's going to be like a, like a choose-your-own-adventure review. See... The way it works is you listen to the song and write all the jokes and make the incisive criticisms while I put on my headphones and listen to some Sarah McLaughlin. How's that? Try it out. Do it now. Start now.
this is not gonna work. I don't even like Sarah McLaughlin. One day while the light is glowing, I'll be in my castle cold. Look, that hook, it, it's just too heavy for a guy as lightweight as Pitbull. Like, I, I didn't even mind Pitbull's last party song. It, it wasn't anything special, but it was okay. But <sighs> there is no way in the universe Pitbull should be going for a mood any more serious than <laughs> that, that thing he does. No, not that. Yeah, that. It's, it's harder than it looks, I'll give him that. Like, no, I can do better than this. Let's, let's really take a look at it. Ask for money and get advice. Ask for advice, get money twice. Oh, yes, that old chestnut. A little worn, but still true. Real prosperity comes not from handouts, but from understanding and wisdom. Expand on that thought, Pitbull. Where do you turn to when you need it? I make dollars, I mean billions. I'm a genius, I mean brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, you mean I should be taking advice from you? And then why not? You're a genius, Pitbull. Yes, you make money, so you're a genius. You know who else has money? Donald Trump. Another genius. As is Paris Hilton. I, d I don't know why they don't just replace IQ tests with your W-2 form. You're, you're a genius, Pitbull. You're a musical genius. Let me demonstrate his musical genius. See, specifically I should focus on the beat here because, oh boy. See, we got Christina Aguilera, Christina aguilera everywhere, and then uh, this happens. Hey, that's the synth riff from Take On Me, right? Yep, that is indeed the riff from Take On Me. Why is that the riff from Take On Me? Does this song have anything to say about Take On Me? Does Take On Me have anything to do with this song? Does it use the knee-jerk recognition we all have of Take On Me to any end whatsoever? Does it even sound good? No, it sounds like complete crap! Actually, can I tell you a story here? About 10 years ago, back when I was in college, I had a job at Best Buy, and just like anyone with a shitty retail job, I had to listen to the awful in-store radio and its 10-song playlist every day. And the song I'm talking about in particular was this techno song that sampled the melody from, uh, you know, that song, Without Me by Eminem. Yeah, that. It sampled that. And there was nothing else. It was just that one sampled riff. Just that over and over and over again. Just that riff pumped into some stupid, crappy, happy, hardcore shit, and I would hear it multiple times a day. Check this out. I have scars. In fact, you can probably trace the fact that I've been always a little electronica resistant to that one song. It's just so lazy. It's not just that one song either, as I discovered. You can just take one riff people know and just jack it up with that synth crap and voila, you've done nothing. But that's what Pitbull has done here. This is the musical equivalent of one of those shitty spoof movies referencing some famous movie but not actually having a joke with it. I am Iron Man. Right? Like, this is the laziest, worst, stupidest use of sample since, oh, gee, the last Pitbull song I reviewed. Well, let's see what else he raps about. See, he, he just wants to feel this moment, as opposed to, I guess, all those other songs where he raps about stressing out, trying to save money for his kid's college education. I don't know. See, he makes money. He wears suits, nothing suits him like a suit. Cause you see me in a suit with a red tie tied up. Yeah, he's he's seen the world. Reporting live from the tallest building in Tokyo. Uh, that, that's one of the few things about Pitbull that actually does him apart from the other party party guys. His his love of travel. He loves talking about how he's seen different parts of the world. One of his actually tolerable songs was all about that. I mean that's something. 
or at least it would have been before he beat that into the ground, just like the other one thing he raps about. Like, nice, you've been to a lot of cities. Like, he, he usually doesn't say anything about those places. He hasn't absorbed any culture or history. He just lists them like they're Pokemon cards he's collected. The tallest building in Tokyo. Brazil, Morocco, London to Ibiza. Next step, like I saw Lanka. Stockholm, Beirut, Cape Canaveral. Mumbai, Morocco, in Manila, Dubai, Helsinki, to Malaysia. United States, Canada, Mexico, Panama, Haiti, Jamaica, Peru. What else? Suits. Suits in exotic places, girls, punchlines that don't really make sense. I see the future, but live for the moment. Makes sense, don't it? <laughs> Expensive alcohol, all the usual pit bull crap. Am, am I trapped on a Mobius strip? There's nothing new. Not a single new thing in these lyrics. I, I might as well just play my old pit bull reviews over this. Actually, why not? Why, why, why don't I do that? Why don't I do just that? If he's going to recycle himself this obviously and sample this lazily, why shouldn't I? This song certainly was a big seeming pile of number two. What with its mismatched sample, off topic lyrics, tired self aggrandizing, it is a complete and utter disaster. But yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that worked totally well. I, I, I could keep doing this. Report and laugh from the tallest building in Tokyo. It's nice that you've traveled around the world, Pitbull, but you're not writing an Indiana Jones theme. Like, the men in black, they basically stay in New York. There's three movies and they don't generally leave New York. Okay, that sample didn't quite fit. But neither does the sample for Fearless Moment. Meta commentary! Actually, pull back some some of the older Pitbull videos. Pitbull, I hate you so much. God, you suck so hard, Pitbull. You suck so hard. God, I was so angry back then. Okay, well, fortunately, I think I also have to talk about Christina Aguilera, who I haven't done an episode on because she doesn't have hits anymore. Let me hit you with my opinion here. Christina Aguilera oversings and is awful. Yes, clearly the genius is me for coming with a groundbreaking original criticism. I'm only behind what Billy Joel, Family Guy, and every human being with ears. Like, why Pitbull tapped her for the hook, I have no idea. She's a has-been. You can tell how desperate she's getting by the way she forcibly inserts herself into every single scene of this video. Real fat, all day, now baby, we can you know how I said Jay-Z is turning into Jack Donaghy? Christina Aguilera is turning into Jenna Maroney. I mean, yeah, she's on that show, but being on a hot show didn't make Paul Abdul any more musically relevant. Why her? Christina Aguilera. Oh, right, right, yes, that's... Pitbull's trying to work with, like, every Latino singer in history, and she's Hispanic, and that she has a Hispanic last name, pretty much no other connection to her Latino side at all. Hey, y'all remember when she released that Spanish album? Yeah, that was pretty hilarious. If I recall correctly, she spoke Spanish like Peggy Hill. Yo poder ver que usted ser caballo razonable. Actually, no, wait, I, I did do that one episode that involved her and moves like... Yeah, that, that mess. Let's see if I can sample that old video. One day while my light is glowing, I'll be... It reeks of utter desperation for Christina Aguilera. I wish I had more time to dedicate to Christina's descent into complete irrelevance, especially that colossal failure of her last album and its terrible debut single and its god-awful video. Uh, it's just, as an artist, she's always seemed just confused about what she's trying to accomplish. Way to frame a camera shot, Todd. But... Yeah, that was all still true. Nothing has changed. I mean, nowadays we're talking about a different failed disaster of an album, but it's all still basically true. Wow, the more things don't change, the more they stay the same, I always say. I just wanna feel this moment. No, I, I, I don't know what else I can do here. Like, the sad part about this song is that it's about living in the moment. And if there is one thing Pitbull is actually kind of good at, it's being not just boastful, but actually grateful and appreciative about how far he's come, the privileges he enjoys, and compare that to Drake, who tries to do that, but mostly sucks at it. My friends and I were broke, but now we're not. My friends and I were broke, but now we're not. <laughs> I didn't even ask permission to use that. <laughs> Unlicensed sample. Seems trying to sue. Now my point is, I'm not opposed 
to a song about feeling the moment from Pitbull. It's just that the moment he's trying to make us feel sucks. It just plain sucks, and there's not much else to say about it. It's a monument to its own failure. Now there's a quote I can say for future reviews. Keep it going. Inexcusable. Oh my god, this song sucks so much. Someone give me a bag of vomit in. It makes me feel like a giant alien robot is urinating on me. Oh my god. I've got enough episodes I can just do that forever. That's the idea I've ever had.